Hi, this is Julie Harlan. Please visit my website at yourmathcal.com where I organize my videos by topic. A fraction that contains one or more fractions in either its numerator or denominator, denominator or both is called a complex fraction. Below are five examples of complex fractions. Um, complex fractions are not in simplified form and there are two common methods for simplifying a complex fraction. In the first method, both the numerator and denominator need to be written as single fractions and then you can multiply the numerator the re by the reciprocal of the denominator. In my example, the very first one is in that form, so method one works very well for that. For the rest of them, method two is actually easier for most people. You multiply the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction by the least common multiple of all the denominators of fractions in the numerator and denominator, and this eliminates the complex fraction in the first step. All right, in this example, we're going to use method two. So I have to look at all the fractions and decide what the least common multiple of all those fractions is. There's an x and there's x squared. Those are the different kinds of denominators. So the least common multiple is x squared. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator of the whole complex fraction by x squared. x squared, that way we'll be able to eliminate fractions. So we have to do the distributive property. x squared times 1 is x squared minus, now what's going to happen when I multiply x squared times 25 over x squared? What will happen is the x squared will cancel. So I just have x squared minus 25. You could write that step down. In fact, I'll do it on the denominator so you can see what it would look like. And in the denominator, I also have to go ahead and um, do the distributive property. Make sure that you always multiply both the numerator and denominator by the same thing. You can't multiply the numerator by x squared and the denominator by x. We're trying to make a, a, an equivalent fraction. So I have x squared times 4 over x plus x squared times 20 over x squared. So that's what it would look like if you didn't do it in your head. All right, so there's where the x squares cancel. Now what's going on over here? I have x squared over x, so there's still an f one extra factor of x up here, because right here is subtract the exponent. That's one way of thinking about it. So when you cancel those, you will just get an x. So I have x squared minus 25, and then be careful here, what do we have going on? I have x times 4, that's 4x, plus, and all I have left here is 20. So we have eliminated the complex fraction, now we just have a single rational expression here, a single fraction, but we have to see if we can reduce that further by factoring the numerator and denominator. So let's see, the numerator is the difference of two squares, x plus 5 times x minus 5. And the denominator, let's see, the only thing you could do there is take out the common factor of 4. And now I see that I have a common factor of x plus 5, so I can cancel those. The final answer then in the numerator is simply x minus 5. And in the denominator, all I have is 4. If you want, you keep the parentheses around the x minus 5. That's up to you.